I'm George Nottingham. My business is Groundworks of Palm Beach County. Groundworks started in business in 1986 uh, here in South Florida, and we moved to Alvin, Texas in 2001. Since 1990, I've specialized in date palms. Now, during these past three decades, I've had an opportunity to study Phoenix Dactylifera medjool, Phoenix Dactylifera zahidi, and then, of course, Phoenix canariensis, Phoenix sylvestris, Phoenix reclinata, the entire family of Phoenix species palms. And I've had the opportunity to see them and experience how they're actually performing under a, just a, a myriad of different environmental and cultural scenarios in the Southeast, as well as in the Caribbean, in Texas and Central Texas, uh, down in Louisiana in the swamp areas, uh, pretty much every microclimate you could possibly imagine where date palms might be utilized. It's given me a really unusual degree of insight into not just what the book might say about the tolerances of, of these palms, but also about what they actually do in the real world under real world circumstances with whatever kinds of real world maintenance they actually get. Today, what I want to talk with you about is a little bit about diseases, about the reasons that date palms are utilized in the landscape, and most importantly, about what our clients, your clients and mine, expect from these palms and expect from the investment they're making in these palms. I think everyone knows that where you're investing thousands of dollars in, in a palm tree, or in anything for that matter, your the expectation is for decades of performance, not just a few years, not just two years, not just five years, but you're expecting that that palm is going to perform across decades of time. That's a very important equation. It, it, it ties directly to value. And without the ability to look your client in the eye and tell them that these palms are gonna perform across decades here in your yard or on your site or on this roadway or in this public domain, well, I would think that what we're not doing is delivering good value. So here today, I'm going to take you across the state. We're going to look at a few sites where medjool date palms in particular have been in the ground for 20 years plus. We're going to talk a little bit about a disease that's become a real problem in seedling date palms, which are primarily Phoenix canariensis and Phoenix sylvestris. We're going to talk a little bit about the value equation. The hope is that as you go forward, on the design side, as well as on the installation side, that you're making an informed choice for yourself and for your client. Come on, let's take a little look around. This is an incredible site. This is uh, MacArthur Causeway in Miami Beach. These palms have been in the ground now for 22, 24 years, I think. They're rooted directly into the ocean, but look at the uniformity. Look how well the palms match after so long in the ground. Here we have Star Island. Now, this is another site that's near and dear to my heart because the cultural scenario is pure high saline. The palms are rooted directly into the ocean. They need almost no disease prevention whatsoever. And they're almost never fertilized because they're literally pulling magnesium and potassium right out of the sea. Bell Harbor, beautiful avenue in Bell Harbor. Here we have Fort Lauderdale Beach. This is another just wonderful site. Direct Atlantic exposure. How many palms can you put on the beach that'll go through hurricanes, all kinds of weather events, constant Atlantic winds hitting these palms and yet almost no visible salt damage? That's what you can rely on from a jewel date palm. That's just what they do. They're absolutely fantastic. Take a look at that. You just don't see that with date palms. This is the Addison Reserve. This is another one of my favorite sites. And I say favorite sites because of the continuity. Look at the palms after 20 years in the ground. That is a product of genetics. That is a product of palms that are literally genetically identical. They're performing exactly the same way, one palm to the next, under a given set of cultural, cultural conditions. Greystone, this site is just stunning. It's only been 18 years or so in the ground, but look at the palms. Look at the canopies. These palms all match. You don't get that with seedling date palms. We won't get it with sylvestris. We can't get it with canaries. But with medjool date palms, because they're produced from shoots, this is what you can reasonably expect across the decades. And those are those decades that our clients are expecting. They make this investment with the expectation that decades will go by. And after those decades have gone by, they're gonna have this. This isn't just in a community. 
This is on roadways. This is in shopping centers. This is on commercial buildings. This is literally in every microclimate in the state of Florida. Every microclimate, not every microclimate in the state of Texas, I'll take that back. Every microclimate from I-10 south in the state of Texas, down into the swamps in Louisiana. If they're installed correctly, and if the pH is accounted for, these are the results you're gonna get after decades on site. Look at this, New Smyrna Beach. New Smyrna Beach, all of these palms are planted in tiny little cutouts in the street. There wasn't a lot of room for the sidewalks, and as a result, they didn't have a lot of space for the palms. Thriving, after 20 plus years, all the palms are matching on the street. They're all extremely healthy. They get reasonable maintenance, but nothing fantastic. And they're in little teeny cutouts. Where do you get that kind of continuity? This is a site that we planted for a favored customer of ours. This is a Unicorp site. These palms were 18 foot CT when they went in. They're 30 now. Look at how well they match after 20 years in the ground. This is what happens when you have palms on site that are genetically identical. That's right, that's what I said, genetically identical. See, the way medjool date palms are produced, as I said, they're grown from shoots. Those shoots are young suckers removed from the adult, and what you have there then is a literal clone of the original adult. That process is carried forward, and that was really, really important to all of us aesthetically way back when. But what's more important, even now today, is the disease resistance that comes along with those genetics. Now, achieving this kind of a match across so many years, you can't do that anywhere else. You can't do it with anything else. But having those years go by, having those decades go by, also means exposure to weather events, means exposure to cultural, all different kinds of cultural oh, maladies, but most importantly, exposure to disease. And in the last five or six years, phytoplasma disease has become a really big deal with day palms. You see that? This is something that you cannot achieve and you can't see in any field of any other variety of date palm. These medjool dates are literally all the same genetically. So when they show up on site, they're gonna perform literally all the same. That's, a little, that's our little plug for Groundworks. Hope you don't mind. That's our Groundworks Boynton facility. One of the things that we like to stress is that our employees here in Florida and our employees over in Texas perform all the work on our palms. The, these people are experts. These guys have been doing this for many, many, many years. And most importantly, they're paying taxes and they're working in our environment. Now, this is something that I have to show you. Um, I, I don't like showing it, um, but it's something you need to understand and see. Phoenix Sylvesterus has demonstrated itself to be highly susceptible to Texas Phoenix palm decline. It's also been renamed lately uh, lethal bronzing. Uh, the disease is vectored by an insect, just like lethal yellowing was. It, uh, it's demonstrated itself to be really, really prevalent in seedling date palms, canariensis, and in particular, sylvestris. And what you're seeing right here, these are sites where the palms either are, are growing out on site, sometimes in the public domain, highways. Um, but also in the nurseries where you may have some palms that are apparently healthy standing right next to palms that are obviously diseased, okay? Everybody's got to make a living. You can't honestly expect farmers just to throw away their entire crops, although we have seen that some have. Some have realized there's just nothing they can do to get past this. Others, well, they're going to go out in the grove. They're going to dig palms that are apparently healthy. But if those palms are standing next to palms that are infected with TPPD, or lethal bronzing, you simply don't know whether or not a, an apparently healthy palm coming out of that same grove is already infected. You just don't know. You got a period of time that it takes between inoculation, you know, when, when the palm actually is injected, if you will, with the phytoplasma, and the point where it becomes symptomatic. That's a good six weeks or so. During that time frame, you're not going to have any really obvious visible signs of disease or infection. So reasonably, you can take palms out of the field that look great, send them to the site, and then have this happen. Now that's bad enough in one palm or two palms, but what makes it far worse is that it's going to spread. That vector is all over the state.
We incidentally are not yet 100% sure who the vector insect is that actually moves this particular phytoplasma. It's reasonable that it's going to be a plant hopper, just like the plant hopper that moves lethal yellowing. But we're not 100% sure which plant hopper it is yet, neither here nor there. The bottom line is that those plant hoppers exist all over the state. And once you have a host that is containing the phytoplasma, sick palm, just one on site, those plant hoppers have an opportunity to trade fluids with that host. They're then gonna go out and look for other hosts, which if you have uninfected sylvesterous, or if you have uninfected canaries, or unfortunately, if you have sables, anywhere in the, anywhere in the, the near area, it's likely that that infection will spread, creating another host that more plant hoppers can then get into, trade fluids, and we end up with situations just like that. The amount of money that's invested in these palms by the state, by us as taxpayers, by homeowners, by business owners, well, we have an obligation to demonstrate to them that that investment is well protected, that we have decades, and that they will get decades of performance out of the palms we can't do that with Sylvesterus anymore. It's difficult to do that with Canariensis, but with Sylvesterus, it's just not something that can be done. On the other hand, with medjool date palms, where we have seen literally hundreds and hundreds of Sylvesterus failing all over the state, we've seen maybe a handful of medjools. That says something. There is no empirical data, but that says something. And we've got to pay attention to that if we're investing well, if we're investing thousands and thousands of dollars in creating aesthetics that are meant to carry forward for decades. I would hope, I would hope that everyone would understand that if there are questions about these palms, if there are things about medjools that you don't understand, turn to someone like me. I'm not the only guy who offers these palms for sale. I've done a lot of time with them. I've spent my career learning about date palms and in particular about medjool date palms and sylvesterous date palms. I probably have, well, as much knowledge of what happens on site in different microclimates as anyone else in the state or for that matter in the country. I'm not a scientist, I'm not a PhD. But my experience is broad and I can help you understand how to be successful and how to avoid something well like this. Simply put, when you're investing in aesthetics, you need to buy something that's going to give you decades and that medjool date palm, that's the one that's going to do it. If you ever have any questions or you need to get in touch, I'm easily emailed at gpn at datepalm.com or you can reach me by telephone at 800 753-5127. I look forward to answering questions and of course, to filling orders for gorgeous medjool day palms.